In this video I will show you how to set up some basic lighting in your Unreal Engine project. Before we start we need to make sure that our project is using the Lumen lighting system. To do this go to edit then open the project settings. Next scroll all the way down to rendering. Click it then scroll down until you find global illumination. Then you want to set the dynamic global illumination method to Lumen. The reason we're using Lumen is because it gives realistic, fully dynamic lighting and reflections in real time without the need for baking. Now you can just close the project settings. There are three main types of lights that you can use to light your level. To access them, click here, then go down to lights. I'll start by showing you a point light, so I'll just click and drag it into the level. A point light emits light equally in all directions from a single point. So if I change its radius, you can see that all the objects around it are being affected by the light it's emitting. The point light can be useful for lighting large spaces as well as small localised sources such as light bulbs or candles. The next one we'll be looking at is a spotlight. This one emits light in a cone shape from a single point, creating a circle of light on the object it hits. Spotlights can be useful for focused lighting such as street lamps or ceiling lamps. The last light we're going to look at is called a rect light. If I drag it in you can see that the light is being emitted from a rectangular surface. This one can be useful for simulating light coming in from a window or from a TV screen. Now I'm going to show you how you can utilise these three different types of light to illuminate your scene. When adding your lights you always want to make sure that they are coming from a realistic source. For example the first light we're going to add is going to look like it's being emitted from this light. Also the type of light you use needs to make sense for the source it's coming from. So as this light has an opening in the bottom where the light is being emitted, it makes sense to use a spotlight. So click this, then go down to lights, then click and drag in the spotlight. I'm going to move this in line and as close as possible to the light bulb without accidentally overlapping it. Next we'll have a look at changing some settings for this light. At the moment it looks a little bit too bright so I'm going to decrease the intensity. Around 6 should be good. Next, you can change the colour of the light here, but it's often better to use temperature as it looks more realistic. I'll get into this a little bit later. Next, the attenuation radius is the distance that the light reaches. I'm going to set this to 700 so that the light reaches the ground. Next, you can add an inner cone by increasing the inner cone angle. This inner cone creates a higher intensity of light in the centre of the spotlight. This is useful for illuminating the objects on the counter while still having some of the light reach the ground. 25 is about perfect for this. Next we can increase the outer cone angle to allow the rest of the room to receive some light. I'm going to set this to 60. Adjusting the source radius affects how sharp the shadows cast by the light are. So a larger radius softens the shadows, while a smaller radius makes shadows crisper and more defined. I'm just going to increase this slightly to 3. The soft source radius on a spotlight controls how blurry the edges of the light source appear. So a higher value makes the light's fall off look softer and more natural, while a lower value keeps the source's edges sharp. I'm just going to set this to 5. You can also change the source length for if you had a longer light, however ours is just coming from a light bulb so we're going to leave this at zero. As I mentioned before, using temperature is good for changing the colour of the light while keeping it looking realistic. If you decrease the temperature value, the light will have a warmer hue, and if you increase it, it will have a cooler hue. For this light, I think it will look better slightly warmer, so I'm going to set the temperature value to 5000. As I mentioned before, it's important to look at your scene to find sources that make sense for the light to come from. Again, it's important to look at your scene to find realistic sources of where your light could be coming from. So next we're going to add a light to the stove. For this we're going to use another spotlight because we want to direct the light downwards onto the objects on top of the stove. A stove light generally isn't very powerful so we're going to drop the intensity down to 1. For this one we're going to use the colour wheel to set the hue of the light. I'm going to select yellow then drag down on the saturation bar to make the light look slightly more realistic. Then I can just click OK. Next I'm going to set the attenuation radius to something where the light just about reaches the floor. This is because this light is low powered so only a small amount of light should be reaching the ground. 
which in this case is around 200. Next we're going to add an inner cone so that the objects on the stove top receive a bit more light. 35 seems to be a good angle for this. Next we're going to increase the outer cone angle so that a bit more light is scattered around the room. I'm going to set this to 80. Now that this is done we can move on to adding some light coming in through the windows. For this we want to use a rec light so drag it into the level. Rec lights are perfect for windows as you can adjust the size of their rectangular panel to match the shape of the window. So to set this up move it as close as you can to the window then move it directly into the centre. Next adjust the source width and height till the rec light closely matches the shape of the window. Next you can change the barn door angle which effectively lets you crop the shape of the beam stopping light from spilling out to the sides. In this case around 76 looks good. Next I'm going to decrease the intensity so the light looks a bit more natural. I'm also going to decrease the attenuation radius so that only objects close to the window are lit. 350 seems to be about right. Finally I'm going to enable use temperature then increase the temperature value to 7000 to make the light look a bit cooler. Next I can just hold alt and drag to duplicate this light to use for the other window. These lights still look a bit too bright so I'm going to decrease the intensity again to 2.5. Next I'm going to add a light to the inside of the fridge. Because we want the whole inside of the fridge to be illuminated as well as some light spilling out the door, we're going to use a point light for this. As you can see there's a small red X next to the light icon. This appears when the light from too many sources overlaps, which can result in severe performance issues in your game. To attempt to fix this I'm going to decrease the attenuation radius of the point light. We can do this because we only really want to light the inside of the fridge, so the attenuation radius can be quite small. Now you can see that the red X has disappeared so our lights are no longer going to cause performance issues. At the moment this light is way too bright so I'm going to decrease the intensity to 2. I'm also going to increase the attenuation radius so that a bit more of the inside of the fridge is lit, and hopefully 70 is low enough not to cause any issues. Next, to create the effect that the inside of the fridge is very cold, we're going to enable use temperature, then increase the temperature value to 7500. Now if we press play we can get a better look at how our lights are looking. You should now understand the basics of how to set up different lights in your Unreal Engine project. If this video helped you please feel free to like and subscribe or support me on Patreon so that I can keep making these Unreal Engine tutorials. Thank you so much for watching.